quite uh, vital and uh, we're looking at uh, curbing uh, the increase in suicide. Well, uh, WHO uh, estimates that close to 800,000 uh, people uh, commit uh, suicide or die of suicide every year. 800,000 people you know, around the world. So our focus uh, this morning is to look at why and how can we curb uh, the menace of suicide. And to talk about that uh, is Omoru Iyawe, uh, the Ogun State uh, Coordinator of African Project Against Suicide. Welcome to the program. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, sir. Uh, good morning. So, yes, we're talking about suicide this morning. In the 21st century, with a lot of information and education in and around the world, why are we still having an um, increasing rate of suicide? Well, thank you. Uh, we, we may not be able to tell us and mm -hmm. say this is the reason, because uh, uh, this is the exact reason, because the, the cases of suicide, uh, it is being researched now. Uh, if you look at the, the, the number that uh, is involved, not just in Nigeria, but uh, in the entire continent of the world, and you now begin to wonder what is really causing it. That is the, exactly the question you are asking. Uh, suicide comes from the inner feeling of an individual. And just as we are seated here, just as people, viewers are watching, uh, a decision can just come up because of the situation in the whole world. Uh, we have just uh, come out of uh, the, the challenge of uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. We have just come out of NSAS uh, pro uh, problem. We have just come out of uh, maybe uh, financial distress in, in the country. It is affecting every other country. Look at the number of people that are dying. When loved ones die, some people may not be able to bear it the way others will. And some may just think that they are resolve, resolving to ending their life, especially if that person is maybe their benefactor. And when you take, up, you take a look at uh, the way relationships uh, go on, so many things. People think that uh, the misconception that uh, it is when people are poor, they just feel that they want to resort to suicide. Uh, the poor, they can die. They can take the decision that they want to end their life. The people that don't have, that even are rich, that's why they say the rich also cry. Even those that are rich, they take up, they take their life. You, you, you can attest to the recent one that happened uh, here uh, recently about this uh, dark poor man. And is that a poor man? In fact, that has to do with, if you look, if you look at the, the family lineage, you will see that uh, there are more questions than answers when it comes to what are the causative factors. But I've just mentioned a few, and when it comes to the youth uh, arena, which is also becoming more prominent now, uh, you'll find out again that when people fail in their pursuits, in their determination, look at failed exam, look at uh, family influence, look at anxiety, uncontrolled anger, and stress, you know, emotional disorder, which is generally results into depression. You can hardly remove this from the society. But these ones will always be there. When the societal problems, challenges are always endless. Mm. Take for instance, if you look at this studio, if you, if, I, if you sit down here for about 20 minutes, we're likely to sleep off. Without food, without taking drug, you sleep off. Some people are on drug, yet they cannot sleep. Because of what? Because the environment is not convenient for them. It's not conducive. You are, you are at home, you eat good food. You cannot sleep because there is no light. Mosquito will bite you. You have malaria. You are sweating. You put on fan. The fan starts blowing hot. So you begin to feel, why am I in this country? But those that are in you know, other better countries where you have uh, amenities that are working, they have their own, that may be health problem, is their own. Mm -hmm. And they begin to wonder why they got creates this place to be so cool mm -hmm. that it brings about some other challenges that is not suitable to our survivor. So okay. let me just put it that there are a lot of problems, mm -hmm. causative factors mm -hmm. that will lead to people committing suicide. And of course, uh, one of the causative factors uh, yes. we've been able to mention is, I think, uh, what I could call disappointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, when people can meet up with perhaps maybe targets and uh, so many courses basically. Yeah. Uh, but how should people uh, handle the disappointments, you know, for instance? Good. The, the best way to handle disappointments, uh, especially when it relates to expectation, anxiety, is to avoid the scenario. Avoid it. There are so many ways you can go about avoiding them. Take for instance, if you look at, if you drive around the whole town, before you move 20 uh, minutes, you will find five places where you have play game, play best, bet, bet, I think it's better ninja or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 We have other, other, even casino, when we're small, things like that. Why going into betting? Why going into game? When you know you do not, you are just managing resources. It, it, it may not be surprising if somebody who has millions begin to say, let me put some here. But you find that people that cannot even find means to eat, they go and gamble with the little they have, expecting so much profit. And usually, you hear, ah, it's just a little chance I would have won. And that creates disappointment. And that disappointment can further degenerate into further challenges that he may not be able to cope with. Now, when you take a look at disappointments again, apart from this social area, what about marital level? People get married, religion uh, is playing a lot of role in this. Remember, before you get married, you begin to say for better, for worse. You come into it. And the pastor or the imam will tell you, you have somebody you want to get married to, go and pray over it. And the couple, because they are always also engaged in the euphoria of getting married, they say, ah, we have prayed, even when they did not pray. They say it is God that has spoken, even when God did not speak. And you just maneuver yourself into the marriage. And along the line, you see that this marriage is not working again. And these pastors will not tell you, please, you must not leave that marriage. Even when the man is beating the wife and is almost killing her, they say you must not leave, endure. You have that means endure till death. You understand that now? Mm -hmm. But really, it's not really bad for the pastor to say, go and endure because you have to endure all marriages. But endurance under the context that that marriage was actually assigned by God. But assigning by God means you pray. But you didn't pray, so the foundation was weak. And when weak and destroyed, what can the righteous do? So that is the situation. And so, because you didn't start on the right platform, and you want to maintain the normal platform, it cannot stand. And so, so many other things happen. In terms of expectations also, you are going into something, and you know you didn't prepare. You are going for exam. You didn't prepare. You, didn't, you prefer to go and spend five hours in the mosque, praying and counting the... the something they, they used to count to pray. I think you, you do that. You go to the church, you carry Bible, you go and do vigil because you want to write exam. But you have refused to read over the past period of the semesters you have mm -hmm. in the university. You are busy doing students union week. You are busy doing club activities. You are bu busy doing societal activities. When it's just one week to exam, a few days to the exam, you want to go and start having sleepless nights and you have all the time to go and do night vigil. Look, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. And I can tell yeah. you, to fail to prepare is to prepare to fail. to fail. And when you fail, it is not even the end of life, it is the beginning of a new chapter. And okay. it can become successful. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Looking at, uh, back, back in 2016 right now, um, statistics say that um, about um, 100,000 people, um, about 11% of women actually uh, commit more suicide than men. Why do you think the women side than the men side? Yeah, yeah, that one is simple because statistics already have them. They, they are not things that we will always imagine. If you look at the, the population, for example, we have more women than men. And in all facets of life, we have more women playing active role. Now, even when you ask people to come out and vote during the election, more women are out there than men. So they are there. When you are looking for people that are unmarried, more women are there unmarried than men. So when you go to the hospitals today, uh, congratulations, this one has been, but most of them, 
the new birth they are made. So you, I think the first thing you should be asking, why is God sending more women to, to the world than men? It is there you can be able to say, why is this? So and then when you take a look at this issue of causes of suicide, you find out again that uh, uh, many of the causative factors affect women more because they are weaker vessels. In a relationship, for example, that we have mentioned, if a woman, if there is uh, a marriage or, a, or just a relationship that is building up, in terms of disappointment, the man is more likely to cope more than the woman. In relationships, women give more love than men do. Uh, because you, if you look at the, the society where the culture, the cultural effects that has to happen, if a man marries more than one wife, it is seen in the African setting as normal, that it is even allowed. You are even encouraged by your environment, by your family. But it is unheard of for a woman to have, to marry more than one husband. It is seen as a taboo. You know what it is this same man that can break the heart of the woman. So more of them are affected. So if you say you are not, no more interested in the relationship, the man goes to the next person, even after having three, three children four children. But when a woman has just and she's looking for somebody to marry her again, it becomes a big problem and frustration sets in, depression sets in. Especially when in the case of rape. Not in all cases that they are, all, they are, they are also uh, uh, the cause. But a woman that is raped and she's raped and she believes she cannot do abortion, she's afraid of, of uh, sudden death, poor medical attention that may degenerate into uh, a worse situation, decides to have the child. And you that you are single, you don't want to empathize with such a person, and you feel that, ah, for me to go and start another life, somebody to grab you, never. It's not in my history. You go to marry somebody, and you, you will still go ahead to marry another person, and you don't want the woman to say you have a child before. So, mm. it's just unfortunate. Well, uh, 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 Mr. Yahweh, uh, yes, psychologically, you know, yes, what can people do? Because I think that even people have to say that thoughts, you know, mm -hmm. disappointment uh, brings other thoughts, and people at times... Uh, uh, they, they have that thought of maybe they should kill themselves or they should not. Mm -hmm. You know, so psychologically, uh, what can what can they do? You know, to uh, perhaps you know stop these thoughts or you know, that would stop them from uh, or maybe we just not these thoughts to actualize into what uh, we're talking about. Yes, um, you are asking what they can do. If they know what they can do, most of the time they may not have even gone into committing suicide. And that is why you see that uh, uh, APAS, the Africa Project Against Suicide, uh, was established in 2018. Because we looked at it that uh, uh, worldwide, in developed countries, they have set uh, machinery in place to take care of sudden situations like this. But in African countries, because of the attitude of our leaders, no provision is made to take care of such situations. And that is why our body as a non-governmental organization decided to say, okay, let's partner with another body, that's the international uh, anti-suicide body in uh, Washington, D.C., USA, decided to say, let's partner with them. That is why we are a part of them. We are, we are also registered with them to sensitize people. We have our mission and vision. Our, our vision is to ensure that we eradicate uh, suicide in Africa continent. And what, how do we do that? We do that through our mission, and that is to collaborate with uh, stakeholders. The stakeholders, governments, to sensitize them, inform them of the prevalence of suicide, the epidemic nature of suicide, and how they need to adjust their mode of leadership providing the ministry amenities, providing counseling, providing reach out and continuous discussion with students and youths who are major victims of this on how to go about it. And what do you need to tell them? We, they need constant counseling, which we provide anyway. And in the course of doing that, we're also having the, usually if you look at Ogun State, for example, we notice that even in Ogun State, so many of such cases are already coming up. They are building up. We have a good number of them to, to have that record on, on now. That was why they felt that there should be a chapter of 
Africa project against suicide here in Ogun State, and which I am coordinating pre presently. And it is going to be inaugurated even this tomorrow. Tomorrow is a uh, Saturday, but tomorrow. And after that, you will see more of our activities out to uh, universities, polytechnics, college of education, secondary schools. These are the catchment areas and involving their uh, uh, institution administrators so that we can collaborate with them and we stem it. And we know that by the time we spend some period doing this, we should be able to achieve a lot of reduction in the case of suicide here in Nigeria and Africa at large. Okay, um, being the coordinator of this project um, right now, um, from your own opinion or from your own, let's say, research, um, would you say more people commit suicide due to economic challenges or due to, you know, personal reasons? Probably illness, uh, probably um, traumatic experiences or pain, or do, do, do you think most of the um, suicide uh, that has occurred in recent times with your own research have been caused by the economic challenges because people are tired of what the economy looks like or because of their own personal um, challenges? Well, it is uh, both because you, you, it, it is a mixture of uh, uh, causes. Take, for example, we look, the economy is very, very uh, weak. For the, we are all uh, witnesses of uh, to, to this uh, a particular uh, position. Now, you know that uh, if we have, want to count the number of people that are experiencing this, majority fall under the youth uh, uh, age. Now, these people may not be able to take it the way the elderly ones will take it. And that is why they are mostly involved. Some of them will now go into uh, taking drug abuse. Excessive use of drugs is the next thing they want to go into. Drink, take hard drugs, and you continue with this. They lead to it. And that is one major cause. And they think that that is the way out. So they need the proper counseling, which will be continuous, which will be regular, to be able to uh, uh, dissuade them from such action. Then when you now take a look at this same group of people, they look at the economy. The economy can be very deceitful. If you look at now, I learned from the news some time ago that uh, uh, people should go into forex uh, transaction that brings them money. So one just hear that, everybody now begin to go into forex and they begin to fall into, it. forex is good, but, but 90%, 95% of them, they manipulate also. And the, where is the understanding of which one is better? Is government involved in it? To what extent is government involved in it? So when you talk about foreign CBN uh, policy, bank policy, uh, 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 opportunities given out for Nigerians to be able to partake and improve their life economically is a major challenge. And once these things are not there, it depends on who is holding on to the mantle of leadership in government, mm -hmm. what provision that they have made to be able for the uh, citizen to tap from mm -hmm. to improve their life. If we have a government that are able to do that, then maybe there will be changes. But presently, I think uh, the situation is bad and it is getting worse. Okay, uh, Mr. Yahweh, uh, yes. the NDRS uh, 2015 data uh, showed that among men of all races, uh, men over 65 were the most likely you know, to die of suicide. Um, is that true, or does your own investigation negate this? Yes, the, well, to, to a very great extent. That has, we have not been seeing cases of that uh, nature. If you look at men of 65 years and above engaging in suicide, why we, why we, we, we usually when there is a research report, you don't negate, you prove beyond reasonable doubt. You understand? It is that your own research result that will now come out that will now negate that. So why we are working on that? But there is a very simple thing that, analogy that we can make. Do you know uh, that uh, the same, there is another research that says that the life expectancy, that's W, uh, uh, World Health Organization, WHO, the the, 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 the recent report also I read that the life expectancy age now in Nigeria is ranging between 45 and 50. So where does 65 come in? 
You understand? So it means that by that research, they have also worked to find out that you will be very, very lucky to get to the age of 60 in Nigeria. So how, how are we now going to be talking about people dying of suicide at 65, when people will not even get to 65? So everybody that dies at the age of 70 is greatly celebrated in Nigeria of today. I don't know what will happen if there's a new government and there's a new policy. So that is to, to that extent that I would now say, let's put that report on hold and let's work on what we are looking at because we know that the real level that we are looking at is the middle age and the young ones. Mm. So yes. how much of advocacy uh, is embedded in your, in your project? You know? Well, we, the advocacy, the level of advocacy, you know, we have just, uh, we, so far, we, we have centered along the sub-Saharan Africa because uh, Nigeria has not been, the, 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 the provision in the environment has not been that very uh, uh, accommodating. But now we are putting up the force and say, no, this is our own country. We cannot be going to Kenya. We cannot be going to Nairobi. We cannot be going to Ghana. We cannot be going to all this. But you see, you see somebody will say, uh, whatever the dance you want to go and dance, I say, dance it first. We cannot be solving other people's problems while we have our own challenge here. So let us mobilize and see that in every state in Nigeria, there must be a, a charter of projects against suicide. And let us see how that goes. And as we are going, we have gotten to almost half of the states, uh, states in Nigeria already. And we are hoping to catch into more states. If not, if not for the Boko Haram uh, challenges, maybe in the north, we would have probably established some to be able to review uh, the level of uh, advocacy that we have been able to put in place. But so far, it has been so good. Okay, for people who do not, you know, have access to probably maybe the internet to be able to um, know where these offices are, um, how are you helping out in reaching uh, people that are in um, remote areas that are also going through this right now? And even with people that even have access to social media but do not have that freedom to be able to easily just, you know, um, come to your office, what are the things in place? Is, are, are there... Are there some strategies in place where you know people can actually you know put out their opinions? Some people are married and they can't easily just you know call up and, say, and tell their husband that they are trying to you know go to somewhere where uh, they want to um, they, they are thinking of committing suicide that they, they want to they want some orientations how their family look at them. Is there a, a way where you know it's been what, what, how I use the word I like it coded in a way to be able to get their information across and it is uh, there is this privacy to it if, if you understand what I'm saying. I know. To. Yes, the, the truth about it is that nobody really wants to die. Let's be sincere. Nobody wants to die. Even an armed robber that comes to attack you and you face the armed, you disarm the armed robber and you say you want to wait, he will be begging. So that is the truth. If you get to hospital and somebody say, uh, I don't have money. Everybody is saying, I don't have money now. I don't have money now. There's no money. If you ask somebody for 500, I say, I don't have money. Bring 100, I don't have money. Carry the person to the hospital. And before being treated, they say, you must pay $500. The, the person will find money to pay. You can't go to the hospital and say, I don't have money. Even if you have to sell your house, just for you to be alive. So to that extent, nobody wants to die. But you know, we are not saying everybody must come to us. That is not part of the strategy the we use. The advocacy mode we use, we reach out to them. They don't have to come to us. But again, even when people have to come, the because they also explore means. It is when these means are not available that we are finding people resorting to solace and taking whatever option is left to them. But we keep on telling them that suicide is not an option. They must be the need to stay alive. Like the program will be having that tomorrow. If you look at the venue we are going to use, outside it, we pasted a poster there. And just within, in less than 24 hours, after putting the poster there, I have received so far about 15 messages. The first one I received, it was a strange number. I picked the number. They said, the, the land we are having an inauguration in this uh, hotel. I don't just want to mention this because it will go against your promo or something. They said, we are having, but if it's for the advantage of the population, maybe I should just mention because they are watching. For, if for anybody that is having this challenge of depression, you don't know what to do, come tomorrow to there is a place they call BT Grand Hotel at uh, Bonogum in Obantoko. Come there, you will be educated. I got a phone call and they said, please, 
I saw your phone number on the banner you pasted outside. I have been depressed. I don't know what to do. And I've been thinking of taking my life. So please, I want to attend that program. The, the message is on my phone. I can show it to you. We have some of them there that also like that. The same way. So people are interested, but the avenues are not there. Is there a ministry that is to take care of people that are depressed? Although you know that we have, the, the nearest one we can have is the neuropsychiatric hospital. That is the health uh, places. But people see that as a kind of stigma, social stigma. When you say, if I ask you now that, go to Aro for treatment, say, ah, follow my diary. It's not big. Even when you know that it is not a mad men that go to Aro, even though that are maybe mentally disordered, people that are depressed, people that are confused, you can go there mm -hmm. for checkup. But nobody wants, so we can leave psychiatric hospitals out of that, leave the nomenclature out of that, bring, establish a place where people can visit, get the same treatment that we get. Like the program we're having tomorrow, the provost medical director of uh, neuropsychiatric hospital will be give, delivering lecture. And you, I want to believe that we, have, we deliberately chose him because we know that he is a major stakeholder, he is a, a qualified resource person to be able to tackle this area and give people that will be in the audience what they will need in order to stay alive. Mm. Well, uh, you highlighted one of the causative factors, yes. you know, depression. But you know, it, it's one thing to be depressed. It's another thing for the person to know that, yes, you know, he or she you know, is depressed. So what are the signs of depression? What are the signs people should look out for? Yeah, the part, there, there are many. There are many. Some of them you know, but you don't even know that these are the... At times, you see somebody who has the tendency to commit suicide, who has depression, they are easily agitated. For any little thing, they are agitated. It is time for counseling. You see some, they, they take high risk, high level risk, which they know, they, take, they go into without thinking of the pros and cons. When you observe that, it is time to counsel them. You see some, they go into uncontrolled anger. It is time to call them and talk to them. You, you don't have to tell them that this is, give them guidelines how they are going to remove those. Then you see people who find it difficult to sleep. They always tell you, they, I think they, in the medical area they call it insomnia or so. They, they will not, they tell that they cannot, they, can't, they, they hardly find sleep. And once they, it is such, you find time to cancel them. There are some that they will sleep and sleep and sleep and continue to sleep. If the sleeping is getting too much, we more consume shiny. It is that you do, it, maybe thinking a lot of thinking always put the person to sleep. It is time to talk to the person. And you see somebody again who you see that the person is just uh, a, he charges occasionally, and somebody just talking to you. At times, just the person you just be talking with murmuring words and say, "Why are you talking to?" You say, "Ah, no, I'm not to The person is carried away. It is time to talk to the person. Moody situation. You talk to the person. So these are some of these signs. And then when you see that somebody has failed an examination and you ask the person, well, how is your exam? Rather than telling you, you're asking a question, how was your exam uh, result? Exam has just been released. Rather than telling you, I passed or I failed, you will now generalize and say, ah, the result this year was very, very bad. He's telling you the result of this year. He's not telling you his or her own result. So you call the person, educate the person. Anyway, since the result is bad generally, don't bother yourself, uh, even if your own happens to be among those that are bad or good. I think failure is the beginning of another level of success. And you begin to give the person a series of examples of people that have failed severally, and yet, even example of yourself, that you have not done well in the past, and now you are in the, so the person can also, so they will take clue from that. You know, some people do some of these uh, things unconsciously. When people go into debt, unnecessary debt, you go and take things that you, because I love my friend, the person wants to do ceremony, and they, they, they brought a cloth, they call Ashoebi, of 35,000. They bring it to you, and you now say, ah, and I, I cannot reject this one, or this person attended my own program. You collect it. And you know you have not collected salary for the past three weeks. 
for the past three months, and you are going into that debt, it is going to later create challenge for you because the next thing you begin to see text messages. This and that, and you know, how do I do? And when the person pick, uh, ring your phone, you, be, you refuse to pick. It is psychological effect that you'll be, give, you'll be gaining unconsciously. So these things should be guided against. And when you do that, I think we should be able to stay more alive. Okay, um, something I mentioned the other time, you spoke about, you know, a lot of youth have been affected by, by this. Um, how would you advise parents in, um, in um, you know, relating with their children? Because we, we hear about, you know, students because of probably they failed YX, uh, they have extra year in university, so they are sad, they are going through depression. How would you advise parents? Because parents will tell you that I've spent a lot of money. I don't, mean, I don't have money, I went to go and borrow money to pay your tuition to do mm. this and that, and you still come back failing. I mean, how would you advise parents in that instance? Because, you know, they are in a tight corner. They want to charge at the child. They, they are angry. How would you, you know, advise the parent and how would you advise, you know, the child, you know, most especially the parent on handling that situation? Because a lot, a lot of children will tell you that, you know, if, if, if they beat me, I'm, I'm okay. But those words, those words are very, very powerful that comes out, for, you know, from their parents. How would, how would you, you know, um, advise in that situation? Uh, well, it is uh, unfortunate when we come to, maybe this question you are asking, May the, the answers may be for another day. Uh, but I will just chip in a little that this particular program can accommodate. The truth of, no, the number one truth is this. There are many parents out there that have no business in being parents. I'm telling you that. I, I repeat, many parents out there that have no business in being parents. Because number one, we have a lot of them that went into parenting even when they were not matured. So these children kept on growing up, and they were not even matured enough to nurture them rightly. And they kept on giving them uh, on, on achievable uh, aim or target. Take, for example, uh, a child that is in primary five or six at the age of eight years, at the age of nine. And you now want that child to go to GS1 at the age of nine. That child is not matured. Go to all these private schools. That is what you see selling now. They are interested in making their money. They are interested in satisfying the parents. And these parents, ignorant of the future implication, begin to push these children. So these children may be able to cope because there are all these chance available to manipulate them to scale through that level. When they get to the secondary school level, they see push and manipulate them to go to the GSS level. And by the time they get to uh, the final year, which is YEG. They, they know, the, the person that said YEG does not know anybody. Mm -hmm. The person that marks YEG does not know anybody. Mm -hmm. That's why you see everything is ending up cheating. Mm -hmm. They cheat and they go to, even when they cheat and they successfully cheat to the extent of getting their results. The big question again is that there is a, a, a certain age a bracket before you can be ad uh, admitted into Nigeria University. Mm -hmm. Mm. You must not be less than 16 years yes. of age. Many of them are less than 16 years of age. Many of them are not qualified. They work their way to get that result, and they still want to push them to go into higher institutions. They still manage, they still manage. You see, a lot of cheating goes on to get why. Mm. Many of them, they are all fake results. Mm. Mm. Many of those in the university, they go there through that way, and they still begin to cheat and begin to disturb. And when this one cannot cope, because they naturally they are, mm. they are not matured to even cope with what, where they now find themselves. The result into, see, that failure becomes an embarrassment to them mm. because they, they could not no longer mm. continue yeah. how they started. And that is what leads us. So parents mm. should adhere to the lay down rules mm. of academic progress. Mm. If they start well, they will end well. That is just the situation. Yes, uh, Mr. Yeah. Yahweh, well, uh, we could uh, take that for uh, your parting thoughts on the program. Yes, uh, we've talked about uh, coding, uh, the increase you know, of suicide, and I guess as the Njogo State Coordinator uh, for African Projects Against uh, Suicide. Uh, maybe we still, uh, you still have to come back you know, to talk more about this, and that will be more about what uh, APAS, you know, <laughs> you call it, what uh, APAS you know, has been able uh, to do. But you've heard that uh, there's a program tomorrow, so perhaps you've been having suicidal thoughts. You just need someone to talk to. And that's what uh, APAS uh, is uh, definitely into. Okay, uh, we will round off uh, this segment, but we are not done yet. We'll be back you know, for another uh, discussion on the program. Please stay with us. Mm -hmm.